My name is Tom Rummage and I'm in the Applications Engineering Department here at Micro Measurements. And today we're going to talk about shunt calibration. Now I prefer to call it shunt scaling because you're really not calibrating the instrument, you're scaling it for proper engineering units and we'll talk about that in just a second. All right, shunt calibration. It can scale the instrument for correct engineering units. It can correct for errors in excitation or gain if it's a signal conditioning amplifier. It also corrects for lead wire desensitization if you shunt the appropriate arm of the bridge. So the first thing is, let's talk about the theory behind it. <clears throat> if you put two resistors in parallel, remembering back to your old DC circuits, when you put those two resistors in parallel, the overall resistance goes down. And back in the theory, you used to say, well, if I have 220 ohm resistors and I put those in parallel, it'll be 60 ohms, and that is true. In the case of shunt calibration for instrumentation of strain gauges, you want to simulate a very small resistance change. For instance, for a thousand microstrain based on a gauge factor of 2.0, <clears throat> if you shunt that 120 ohm resistor, it will simulate a thousand microstrain or a 0.24 ohm change. So 59,880 on a 120 ohm uh, resistance circuit would simulate a thousand microstrain based on a gauge factor of 2.0. <coughs> so let's look at where we would shunt. Well, one of the places it's most obvious to a lot of our customers, it's shunted at the active gauge. Well, there's a couple of issues with this. First, what is the resistance tolerance of that strain gauge? Is it in fact 120 ohms? Is it in fact 350? The likelihood of it being exactly 120 or 350 or 1000 ohm is fairly small. So first you have to measure that resistance carefully. Second, it's not terribly convenient. You're putting another set or another pair of leads into the gauge site with the potential for their failure of the environmental protection and that sort of thing. You also have to have a switch out there to turn on and off the shunt cow because you don't want it on all the time. It's just not terribly convenient. So if we look at the attributes of shunting the active gauge the advantage is it can simulate compression. It does have that lead wire desensitization, that resistance that's in series with the active gauge in that arm, and would compensate for lead wire desensitization. The disadvantages, again, the resistance tolerance of that strain gauge, you have to measure it very accurately to get a very accurate reading. Second, it's not terribly convenient. You have to go out to the active gauge site and put another set of leads in there, have a switch that you can turn on and off, and environmentally protect all of that is just a pain. You just don't want to do it. Let's talk about the place where I would recommend, and I strongly recommend doing this if your instrumentation is capable. I would like to show you how to shunt the dummy resistance. Now note, the RL that is in series with that dummy resistor is the same length and inherently the same resistance of that lead wires in, in series with the active gauge. Okay, so when we shunt this arm of the bridge, we're giving the same desensitization values as that of the active gauge. And if you look at the, the advantages, it simulates tension, which I like in, in terms of stress analysis. It does compensate for lead wire desensitization as you're shunting an arm that has that same resistance that desensitizes the gauge in series with it. <clears throat> and finally, it's precision resistors, that internal dummy resistor is 120 ohms, probably a 0.02% accuracy. The, the shunt cow resistor, 59,880, very precise resistors. The disadvantage of shunting the dummy is that you have to have a different shunt resistor for 120 ohm versus 350 ohm versus 1000 ohm. For a 120, if you wanted to simulate 1000 microstrain, it'd be not, uh, 59,880. The, if you were 350, you'd shunt it with 174,650, and that would give you 1,000 microstrain. Those values would change based on the resistance of the gauge. Of the last place where we might you might consider shunting, and it probably would be something that your instrument may do normally as a standard, is to shunt the internal half bridge. Now, for the attributes of this are first the advantages you can simulate both tension and compression. It does use precision resistors. It's very accurate. It's convenient. It's inside the instrument and typically easily configured. 
the our resistance of RG doesn't change because the resistance of the shunted arm doesn't change. So the only disadvantage, it does not correct for lead wire resistance, and this is the big disadvantage. The strain gauge will lie to you low, and that's the worst thing a strain gauge can do. We have a little compilation here of all of those different uh, shunting the active gauge, shunting the dummy resistor, shunting the internal half bridge. Now let's talk about a couple of places you do not want to shunt. The first one, and this is the one I say don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. This is a bad idea. Shunting from P plus to S minus. Notice that you're shunting across the signal lead and that will draw a current through that signal lead and that current will have a voltage drop that will only be present during the cal calibration and could be a substantial error depending upon the lead wire resistance that's in series with the active gauge. So just don't do it. Okay. Creates a current in the S-minus lead, could lead to a substantial error, and that error would only be there during the shunt calibration. It's tricky business. Don't shunt across P-plus to the D120 post. While you're not drawing current through a signal lead, you now have this inherent resistance lead and this resistance lead and the inherent um, nominal resistance of the gauge, which might not be 120. You have to measure that very accurately to know for certain what you're simulating in terms of that RCAL. So in general you wouldn't do it. All right. Now let's talk about a little demonstration here. I've got a P3 strain indicator and recorder set up here. And by way of explanation, here's the P3. I'm going to set it up as a full bridge and I've set it up with a nominal gauge factor of 2.0. I remember that I changed earlier. Which would simulate a thousand microstrain based on a gauge factor of 2.0 based on 2.4 or 0 0.24 ohms. Now I have completed the bridge outside of the instrument. I've got this bridge completion box here and I've got a very short 16 gauge piece of wire it's very low or almost no lead wire desensitization. And the reason I'm using this bridge completion box is so I can shunt a known arm of the bridge with, in fact, a 59,880 ohm resistor. Over here, I have a VE40. It's a precision decade resistance box. And with this box, I can make that precision 0.24 ohm change, which would then simulate a thousand microstrain. So the first thing we're going to do here is change that 0.24 ohms. Zero lead wire desensitization. And if you look at the output, look at that. Almost perfectly a thousand microstrain. Obviously we don't have any lead wire desensitization. I'm going to go back to my original zero configuration. Now remember we talked about shunting the active gauge and how it would simulate compression. I'm going to take this 59,880 ohm resistor. I'm going to shunt the active gauge. It simulates a thousand microstrain based on a gauge factor of 2.0. No lead wire desensitization. No surprise. Shunt the dummy resistor, which should simulate a thousand microstrain in tension. And sure enough it does. But with zero lead wire desensitization, the internal half bridge will give you those same numbers. A thousand microstrain here and a plus thousand microstrain here, a minus and a plus. Zero lead wire desensitization. This will never happen in the real world. You'll never have six inches of eight, eight, 16 gauge wire connected. So let's hook up a more realistic situation. I'm taking away this zero lead wire desensitization and I'm going to add 200 feet of 26 gauge AWG wire in a three wire quarter bridge configuration. Not untypical of some of the measurements I've made in the field. Connecting it up as a three wire quarter bridge to this external bridge completion. Got to make sure my turrets are nice and tight because it'll cause it to be drifty or unstable. Now, I'm set up to 120 ohms precision resistance. 
<clears throat> now, if you look at my initial offset, it has changed, and that's because the resistance tolerance of this 200 feet of lead wire is not the same as that of that short wire. So just to keep people happy, I'm going to zero out that offset. Now, we have 200 feet of lead wire desensitization in the circuit. How much desensitization is that worth? 0.24 ohms should be worth 1,000 microstrain. And I'm getting 939, 940. So somewhere along the way, I've lost 60 microstrain out of 1,000. That's a fairly significant percentage of error. So I'm going to go back to the original zero here. Oh no, if I simulate 0.24 ohms, yeah, back at the original zero. Now, if I shunt the dummy resistor, that lead wire desensitization, it still shows the 940 microstrain. That lead wire desensitization is part of that arm and therefore the same desensitization is occurring. So how do I correct for that? What I do is I take that 940 microstrain, oops, 940, divide it by the simulated 1,000 microstrain, which we'd expect at a gauge factor of 2.0, and then multiply times the gauge factor of 2.0. So I get a new gauge factor of 1.880. <clears throat> so we're simulating 1,000 microstrain. We're seeing 941. I'm going to go in and adjust this gauge factor to that one point, oops, point, eight, eight, eight. and there's my thousand microstrain. I simulated a known microstrain with a shunt cow resistor. It gave me a lower than normal value. I took that value, divided what it should be giving me at a based on a gauge factor of 2.0, and I calculated my new gauge factor. So now I have corrected for, for deep lead wire desensitization. <clears throat> See, we got zero again, 0 0.24 ohms here with 200 feet of lead wire. Still get my 1,000 microstrain. Shunt the dummy. A thousand microstrain. Shunt the active gauge. A thousand microstrain. Now watch. I'm going to shunt the internal half bridge. It does not have lead wire desensitization. <clears throat> There's that 60 microstrain. It's added to it. There's no lead wire desensitization. Shunt the other internal half bridge. Same 64 microstrain. Now, remember we talked about the dangerous nature of shunting between P plus and S minus and how if you have a significant lead wire resistance, that can offer a substantial error. If I shunt across that arm of the bridge, I've got 270 microstrain, a fairly large percentage of 1,000 microstrain. That's almost a 30% error, well, 27% error. Are you willing to tolerate a 27% error? I'm almost certain you're not able to do that. So, shunt calibration. If you shunt the dummy resistor with the appropriate precision resistance, it simulates a known microstrain value, and you can correct your gauge factor or your gain on your instrument based on lead wire desensitization and have no problems with lead wire desensitization or lack of strain. Thank you very much.